Hello everybody, welcome to my first ever video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope um, you are trying to relax and enjoy some calming time. My name is Annie and I am creatively confused. I have had a very slow start to my morning. I um, let myself stay in bed um, and I let myself just enjoy having a really relaxing, uh, slow and rejuvenating morning. I just wanted to come and chat a bit. I am very new to this, if you couldn't tell, and I just want to introduce myself and kind of talk about what I aim to do with this, this YouTube channel. I had been wanting to do some sort of YouTube channel for a very long time, and the thing that held me back was, oh, I want to make a channel, I really like filming, I really enjoy the editing process and coming up with ideas and I have all these things I'd like to do, but I didn't have the focus, I didn't have the drive on one specific aspect of the things that I care about. With some encouragement from my family and my friends, they helped me come up with the idea of Creatively Confused. For a long time, I battled with myself. I'd have a phase where I was um, really, really interested in knitting and I was knitting up a storm, I was like finishing projects left and right and then, you know, a month or two would go by, I would not lose interest because it was still something that mattered to me but I'd lose kind of the focus and the drive to be working on it all the time and instead my focus would fall elsewhere. Other things that captured my interest just as much now were, were taking the place of this thing that I had been so obsessed with. I've realized that these things that capture my interest that you know bring me so much joy when I you know allow them to typically I would come back to them in a bit and still enjoy them just as much as the first time, if not more, because now I had more experience and I had more ideas and it was like my creativity was rejuvenated. So my aim with Creatively Confused, which maybe you might understand the name of this channel a little bit more, is to say that it's okay to have multiple outlets of creativity that, that you're passionate about. And while I have so much respect and admiration for those who have this drive and passion for one thing and are just so incredibly talented and skillful at, at what they love to do, I also think that it's not necessarily what works for everybody and if you have multiple different hobbies or multiple different interests, especially in, in creativity, I think that can be a really good thing. I hope you really enjoy this video and I hope you get a sense that if you have multiple things that you care about that divide your time, you're not alone and I hope it brings you as much joy as it does to me. So once again, let's get on to the, the actual content of this video now that this brief introduction is over. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. So today I am making a mock neck long sleeve shirt. I got this pattern from Kiana Bonolo. She's a fellow YouTuber and this was a PDF printable pattern on her Etsy page. I have already printed, cut out, and taped together all of my pattern pieces, so now I just have to cut out the fabric. The fabric that I'm using is a stretchy waffle fabric that I've had in my stash for forever and I have a lot of it, so I figured this was the perfect project to use it for. You can see me spend a lot of time fiddling with the placement of my pattern pieces so that I do not waste any fabric. I trace the pattern by placing pattern weights, or in this case books, on top of my pattern piece so that I get an accurate shape when I trace it out. I trace along the edges of my pattern with a washable fabric marker and then I pin the two pieces of fabric together so that they don't slide and so that I get an even shape as my finished piece. I then cut along the traced line with good quality fabric scissors and I'm left with a finished pattern piece. I'm actually cutting out what I believe is the back bodice piece so this will be the back of the shirt. I'm almost done and once I finish cutting it out, I will unfold it and have a completed back panel. 
Right here you can see me cutting out the sleeves and I cut two layers at once so that I have a sleeve for each arm that's as close to identical as possible. Um, now I'm cutting out the mock neck detailing which will be the collar of the shirt and then I'll have all of my finished pattern pieces. I can get rid of the printed out copies and now I am ready to sew together all of the fabric. Hello everyone, I have finished um, cutting out my fabric. Um, hopefully you will have seen a little bit of that um, in the video before, as well as heard a little bit of voiceover describing what I'm doing. Um, unfortunately, I was filming it at night, so the lighting is less than stellar. I apologize for that, but I'm glad to have gotten this done because that means I can get to sewing soon. I don't know if you will have been able to see, but I ended up cutting two layers for the front piece and two layers for the back piece of the body. I did this just because I was worried it would be a little bit too sheer um, and that I'd have to worry about, you know, layering things under it or something like that. Uh, so I decided to cut out two layers. This would give a much thicker, but also much more opaque body piece. The thing that I'm reconsidering is I'm worried that it'll be um, too difficult to sew together through all of these layers of fabric, especially since it's stretching material and I'm not quite as familiar with that as I am non-stretchy woven fabrics. I'm considering just doing how the shirt was intended, which is one layer for the front and one layer for the back. It might be a bit sheer, but I was thinking what I actually want the shirt for is mainly to layer under other garments, um, such as like dresses and shirts, um, so that I have the mock neck detailing as well as the long sleeve to keep me warm. Um, and if that's the case, I don't want a lot of extra bulky fabric in like the middle of my body because I'll have something over that part of me anyway. The only other time I would really wear it is just kind of around the house and if that's the case I don't really care if it's a little see-through. Long story short, I have pretty much decided to not use both layers that I cut out and just use um, one layer for the front and back as intended. Um, luckily I didn't cut out um, extras of the mock neck or the sleeves so I can just make the shirt as normal and use the extra pieces I cut out for a short sleeve version which I wanted to make anyway so I'm actually really excited for that so now that these are all cut out I'm really excited to get to the actual sewing part I will be using a, a serger or an overlocker that I'm lucky to have access to which is very exciting but also very nerve-wracking because I've really only used it once with mixed results. Let's get on to sewing. Hello everyone, voiceover me is back and here I am just marking out my seam allowance using my seam gauge which is this handy little ruler. Uh, the seam allowance on this piece is half an inch so basically I mark half an inch away from the sides and this shows me exactly where I'm supposed to sew. That way, each of my pieces are the same on both sides and the shirt is the appropriate size. Um, here you can see me using my serger to sew the sides. Um, this gives a finished edge, which is really handy so I don't have to worry about fraying or finishing anything. Um, and it also cuts off the excess fabric to leave a really clean interior. At this point, I am sewing together the front and back pieces of the bodice. I am sewing together at the shoulder and the side seams, leaving holes for my head and for my arms. So this is how it's looking. I've just searched together the sides and the top, so now it is resembling a top. It has um, a little bit of like weird bunching here. Um, I don't really know what that's about, so we'll have to see if that resolves itself when I attach the sleeves. Um, but yeah. Here's how it's looking so far. 
it's fitting pretty well. So now I am starting on the sleeves. Uh, I start by pinning together the side where I'm going to sew and again marking my seam allowance so I know exactly how far to go to get a nicely fitted sleeve. Here's how the seam looks on the sleeve that I just sewed. You can see it's a really clean edge, it's not bulky, and the edges are finished completely so that they won't fray. Here you can see me sewing the sleeve to the actual body. I have to sew kind of in this weird round armhole, so it's a little complicated, but I ended up making it work. Here I am working on the final step, which is to attach the mock neck to the neckline of the shirt. I had to sew through a lot of layers of fabric on this tricky curve, and you'll see how that turned out in a second. Good morning, everyone. I'm back, and I am going to be fixing my mistake. Um, or my mistakes, plural. I got to the end of the shirt and I had done everything really slowly and carefully. I had marked out my seam allowances, I had double, triple checked that everything was properly put together and pinned together, and I was feeling really good about the project. I worked on it for much longer than I meant to. I'd been working on it for so long and so long consecutively that I got a little lazy, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I I cut corners and, you know, the careful, meticulous way I had been doing things, I kind of figured, eh, it'll be fine if I don't do all those things for this last step. I had put together the shirt, I had put on the sleeves, and I was really happy with how it was turning out. And all I had left to do, really, was the collar. And I was like, I know this fabric by now, I know the machine by now, I don't have to be super careful. I tried it on and I couldn't get the collar over my head. So when I was putting the collar together, I noticed the direction that was more stretchy was um, kind of up and down the collar, you know, vertical. When um, I realized it would probably make more sense for it to be side to side so that you can, so it can stretch to fit over your head and all of that. I just forged ahead and I surged it together and I didn't mark where I should sew. And especially on all those tricky curves with a serger which cuts away material so I couldn't really go back and fix it, I should have marked it and I knew better and I just figured it'll be fine. So what I ended up with was a shirt I couldn't get over my head and if I really tried to squeeze it, it was lopsided, it was, you know, weird and, and warped and just, it didn't look good and it wasn't comfortable and I was really upset. I took a few days and I just didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it, I didn't worry about it. And then I completely unpicked it and once it was taken apart, I could really see how shoddy of a job I did. Last night, I cut out a new collar piece. And this time, I really took my time with uh, measuring it properly so that the stretch is the right way. I just, I really wanted to take my time with it and I'm gonna fix my mistakes, right? It would be so easy to just wear it half finished. I want to be more thoughtful with how I do things and I want to do a good job because I certainly feel better when I know I've done my best and it honestly at this point might not be totally fixable but you know at least I will have known that I, I tried my best to fix the mistakes that I made and know that in the future I will try my best to take my time and to take a break so that's what I'm going to be doing this morning. I'm going to be trying to finish it just in a couple of hours. So wish me luck. So here I am taking my time to pin the collar to the neckline and make sure everything lines up as close as possible. And I sew along my seam allowance to try and get everything to fit properly. Okay. Here it is. Um, I just tried it on and 
First off, it was much, much easier to get on. I think it actually looks pretty good. It's not perfect. It's definitely far from perfect. So if you look at the collar, you can kind of see it's like a bit uneven and it like gaps a little bit. Uh, I honestly think there's nothing I can do to fix that because of um, the job I did <laughs> the first time on the neckline really like messed up the lines and I couldn't really fix it properly. So um, like it wasn't actually that noticeable until I kind of showed you, I don't think. Um, but yeah, you can see it's like, like the collar is taller over here than over here. Um, and also the whole thing, it's like a bit gappy, like it doesn't fit very close to my neck, but I honestly think it's not that bad. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think um, for how messed up and unhappy with it I was after I took that shortcut, I think it turned out pretty well. So here's like the full 360. I don't know if you can really see it. But yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks um, really cute and I'm actually really proud of myself that I went back and I took the time to fix my mistake. It actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. And I think the result is so much better. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog and um, I have a lot of other video ideas and videos in progress. So I hope you guys like what I'm doing in the future. And if you'd like to see anything specific or have any comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.